And this is so central. David, please continue. Well, you know, Alex, uh, you know, I've been writing my books for years that this is no new phenomenon. Um, the process we're now experiencing, um, if, if, if you want to use the version of time that we uh, perceive as time, then you're talking thousands, probably tens of thousands, maybe more uh, years, that this has been slowly but surely unfolding. Um, and the same techniques have been used all along. There'll be people listening to this program won't like this, but, you know, what we're talking about here is the same principle as telling people that by, by the very um, fact that they were born, the very process of birth, they are a sinner. It's, uh, it, and if you go back to ancient Sumer and you, you read in, in what we now call Iraq, thousands of years BC, and you, 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 you read their perception of, of, them, of themselves as a general population, and it was that the gods were up there and, and we, they were down here, they were just slaves, they, they, they had the same kind of perception of self that, um, that we're talking about here. All along, uh, the same techniques have been used. They've manifested in different ways, in different epochs, different eras, different stages of history, and different areas of the world. But they're the same basic blueprint. And fundamental to that is to make people feel small, insignificant. They have no power. Because people who believe they have no power do not express the power they have. Because we are constantly expressing our self-perception, our self-identity. So if you can get people to feel that they are useless, they're worthless, they're just as, as um, uh, Prince Philip once alluded to the humanity, just a virus, uh, and, and basically just a, uh, you should have contempt for yourself and everything that you stand for, and the human race collectively the same, then you, you are going to uh, perceive yourself in that way. You're going to manifest your life in that way. You're not going to see the true magnitude of who you are, consciousness, capable of all and, and much greater feats of awareness and creation than the, even the ones you, you've just uh, listed, Alex. This is who we really are. Now, you imagine billions of people on this planet who are in awareness of the full magnitude, scale, potential, infinite possibility of who we are. Uh, a few people controlling uh, them from a central point? Forget it. No chance. So fundamental to this is to disconnect us from a, a true awareness of who we are and to put us both in a, a, a box of self-perception of being worthless but also in a box of little me. I have no power because people who think they have no power, they look up um, or look out to people who have the power. And, and, and it, funny enough, it is the perception that these few have power over us that leads to them having power over us. Oh, you can't, it's all too powerful, there's nothing you can do about it. Watch me. You know, the numbers alone say that the, 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 the game is only... Well, crazy. what's happening the is... They, they impose a predetermination that we're going to fail, a predetermined, uh, a determination that we have no power so that people just think it's absolutely lost. You've just got to go along with everything uh, that's happening. You have to submit to the evil and, and they are just pushing this like never before. Now, now David shifting gears because. Can I just say one thing, Alex, very sure. quickly? Um, you know, what, what we're uh, talking about here is, um, connected to something that I've been writing about for some time. I know I go into deeply into stuff sometimes that people go, you know, that's too far out for me. But what the human body is, um, is a receiver transmitter of information. It's like a computer. Now, um, if you um, program a computer, like on a desktop, you program that to only read information within certain firewalls then that will be the computer's reality. That is what you're going to get on the screen in terms of the computer uh, uh, manifesting its... Well, that's what reality. the term conspiracy theory is. They throw it out there as a computer command. Do not read this information. Do not see it. Disregard it. So what they're doing is systematically programming humanity, programming the body computer, which is the vehicle, not the real us. We are consciousness, uh, uh, infinite awareness. But um, it's the vehicle we use to experience this, this reality we call, we call the world. Um, and it's 
uh, systematically programming that computer through various means, uh, through, through, through education, through media, through all these things, um, to only perceive a, a certain reality. And in doing so, what happens? The computer only reads that reality. And you do not uh, then have the perception of the true magnitude of who we are. Now, everything connects to everything else. They are bombarding us with um, electrochemical poisons and pollutions in food and drink and uh, the genetically modified food, which is designed to genetically modify us. Genetically modify what? Genetically modify, i.e. change the, uh, the way that the body computer um, receives and transmits information. That's what they're doing. And, and, and in all these ways, they are destabilizing and limiting and distorting um, how we uh, read reality because on one level, the body is clearly an electro chemical organism and it has a particular electrochemical balance it has a genetic balance it has a dna balance and once you start um distorting that it no longer reads reality to the potential that it had before it's like having a virus in your desktop computer it doesn't work the same and this is what is happening it's a systematic distortion of the way we read reality by distorting the body chemically, uh, uh, electromagnetically, and also in the way that, that we perceive by the uh, manipulation of the information we receive. It, it, it's the information that we're receiving, Alex, from the, the media and it's, uh, what bravely calls itself education and all these sources is, is no different in its basic theme than actually programming a computer so it reads reality in a certain way. That's what they're doing. And I see an ace in the hole for the globalist because they admit with Project Bluebeam and other reports that have been partially declassified that for 50 years, the British government, the Pentagon and others have actually hyped UFO stories as a cover for some of their secret technology. But also at a key point to unify the planet, as Kissinger talked about and Ronald Reagan and many others, that what if aliens invaded, we would then unify and the government admits they've got secret programs with huge hologram projectors, you name it, to have you know, Christ return, aliens land, yeah. uh, Buddha, Muhammad. They admit this, and suddenly you have all these mainstream media reports we're going to go over after the break where they're saying, oh, looks like aliens might be real. Eisenhower and Churchill knew. You know, and now the U.N. announces we've appointed an ambassador for when the aliens arrive. I mean, they're, and, 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 and we've got you know, top physicists. Uh, coming out and saying the aliens are going to be mean when they come. Uh, this, is, this is a very, very important area, Alex, absolutely. Um, uh, we, we've got time to talk about it now or we wait for a break? Well, I mean, and we got about a minute and a half, but go ahead and start and we'll come back with it. Well, you know, this is a, a, a complex subject, well, slightly complex, in that um, there's two angles to it. Uh, first of all, the idea that humans are the only um, uh, species uh, of like uh, in, in this universe is utterly, utterly ludicrous, insane, and beyond uh, belief. And one day uh, when uh, we wake up a bit more, people are going to say, how could we ever believe it, in the same way as how could we ever believe the Earth was fl uh, flat. However, that having said that, and I can talk more about that after the break, there is also, on the other hand, exactly as you're talking about, in fact, in my, in my uh, latest book, Human Race, Get Off Your Knees, I actually talk about this, that there has been a demonstrable seed change in the way governments and authorities are um, looking at and responding to um, information of this kind. There has been a, a, a blatant decision that there is going to be a total change, more and more stuff out there. It's not going to be laughed at anymore and denied in the way it was before because they are building up to something here which will be a disclosure that will be uh, a fake disclosure, a disclosure that leads to um, the reaction they want in, in the way you talk about. To okay, stop the there. To the planet, yeah. David, let's come back in the next segment and you'll have the floor. Walk through the, the pre-programming for the disclosure, just like it was pre-programming before the last 9-11 attack, to tell you who the boogeyman was. They're, they're clearly doing the pre-programming that the aliens are coming. And all the movies and TV and governments, fiction, non-fiction, they're getting us ready for something. What's the reaction? The preacher man says... Okay, here's the headlines. UFOs, U.S. Air Force officers testify on UFO sightings at National Press Club said they flew over bases and turned nukes off. 
That was all over mainstream news. Here's the mail. Churchill and Eisenhower agreed to cover up UFOs. Uh, here's another report. UFO files. Winston Churchill feared panic over Second World War RAF incidents. Uh, and, and it's just it's just everywhere now. And even when it's clearly not something extraterrestrial, you know, ABC News will point cameras at a Homeland Security blimp at 100,000 feet, even with propellers, and say it's aliens. So, and they've got all these TV shows, the incident, uh, the uh, you know, V. Uh, they've got all these groups saying a disclosure is coming. As I said, the UN last week appointing an ambassador for when the aliens land. David Ike, what's going on here? Well, it's uh, it's a, a, a strange situation in that um, on one hand there are non-human uh, species that are. Um, visiting this planet and inter interacting with it uh, behind the scenes. And this has been going on for a very, very long time. I mean, I've spent 20 years uh, researching this. Um, other people have too. And uh, I uh, have come across ancient accounts all over the world in almost any ancient culture that you want to talk about, whether it's Africa, uh, South um, uh, America, whether it's Asia, wherever. And you find these um, descriptions of non-human entities that were clearly uh, uh, vastly, shall we say, uh, ahead um, of, of uh, the humans at that time in terms of uh, technology. I mean, light years ahead, probably literally. Um, and uh, I have spoken to enough people all over the world um, from every walk of life you can think of, from people in the Swiss banking industry, people in America, people in Australia, people in, in, in the bush of Africa. And they have told me compellingly uh, uh, consistent uh, descriptions of uh, their experiences of these different entities. And indeed, the descriptions of them, because there are a lot more than one species, the descriptions of them are incredibly uh, consistent. And I have uh, too much ridicule, not quite so much as before now, but with much ridicule over the years, as you know, Alex, I've talked about the fact that ultimately behind this human uh, control system, this human bloodline network we call the uh, Illuminati, are a, uh, a, or maybe more than one, but certainly one, non-human race that team, seems to take a reptilian uh, form. And, you know, um, I, I say this to people before we, we, we get on to actually what's going on now. You know, when earlier in this program, Alex, you reeled off... Um, element after element after element of this control system and how it's coming in um, uh, uh, now 